Well, hello everyone. Earlier on today, at the time of me recording this, this will probably be yesterday for yous, CA released a lovely, lovely Let's Play for the High Elves with a custom battle showcasing High Elf versus Lizardmen gameplay. Now this to me looked like a custom battle, so it's not, not a quest battle, just a custom battle on a pretty important map. This map is apparently one of the main places we're going to be fighting over to sort of control the Nexus. One of those sort of key areas to strengthening the Nexus or weakening it depending on what you want to do. And this is obviously in Lustria. Um, I can't remember the exact map he called it. It was something Swamp or something Marshes or something like that. Was it Mosquito? Yeah, I think it was Mosquito Swamp. But yes, you can see the big giant artifact magical tower thing in the background as we're flying over the now. Um, I'm not going to go over all the individual stats to all the units that we've seen because they are subject to change. So we can only really sort of see what they're aiming at instead of taking away, okay, this is what the stats are going to be at release. But if you want to do so, you feel free to pause this video at any point and you can see their stats there in all their glory. Um, a lot of them have been flashing up and going across the screen so far and there's another one right there for the Northern Sea Guard. One thing that I thought was really amazing though is that they've actually addressed the fact, the fact that um, people were not happy with the High Elven Shields. They were really disappointed, they thought they looked weird, they didn't like them. And they've actually came out in this video and said, thank yous for the feedback, here's what we've done to improve it. And keep giving us more feedback like that, because we like it. And oh my god, look at those dragon knights of Calador or Celador, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce it, a lot of elven things are tricky to pronounce. But oh, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. <clears throat> yes, if you want to watch this uh, full trailer, without being muted, etc, etc, stick around to the end. I'll leave it there for you to watch in all its glory. Um, what else did we see information-wise in this video? Yes, now you can see there's both a Frost Heart and a... What's the flaming one called? Fireheart Phoenix? I don't think it's Fireheart Phoenix, but we're calling it Fireheart Phoenix for now. Um, these are technically the same thing in the lure. It's just one is old and one is young. So when the phoenix is born and is very young, it's very, it's hot, it's burning, it's passionate, that's the fire phoenix. But as the phoenix grows old and slows down, it becomes the ice one. And the two units have very s sort of similar but opposite roles. The flame phoenix has awesome DPS output and like attack skills, whereas the frost heart has debuffs on enemies in the area, slowing them down, making it harder for them to kill their opponents. So one's sort of defensive, whereas the other's offensive, and though it was beautiful to see in there, the two sort of working well together. Um, and it was good to see that it confirmed that these units for the High Elves actually get stronger the more Winds of Magic you have. So if you've got if you're going to be spamming spells and depleting your magic aura to zero, your magic power to zero every game constantly, they're not the units to take because they're, you're not going to get the full potential. If you're not even going to bring a mage, which for high elves is a wee bit silly because they're very magic. Oh, look at those knights! Um, they're a very magically powerful race, so to speak. Um, you're going to be able to get a lot more out of them. So it's kind of I'm kind of uh, whether I'm going to want to take them when I play High Elves because I'm going to want them to be at their best. If I don't have a mage, I'm definitely going to be having some in my army. But when I've got mages, because I'm going to be wanting to make the most out of the spells, I can't have make the most out of the spells and out of the phoenixes. Maybe there is a sort of nice level, in, level to find, like maybe try and keep your spell, uh, your pool to about 10, and it's... And then that sort of offsets the... You're sort of getting the best out of both kind of thing, the best of both worlds. 
And then obviously if things get a wee bit south, you have that last little 10 power to drop on to maybe clinch the battle. Yes, I'm not saying it's definitely a bad thing, it's like this, I think it was very good, it's very lure friendly, it's very thematic. It's just saying, um, like me personally, I'm like, ugh, because I want to get the try and get the best out of everything and use everything correctly, minimise losses, that kind of thing. Um, what else did we see for the first time in this? Um, Oh yeah, Northern Seaguard confirmed to be both a melee and a ranged unit because they've got the spears. He said they were really good at defending themselves against larger creatures and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, really happy to see that because they're a unit that I loved in the tabletop because I love utility. Multiple units that can do multiple roles is always something I've loved in Total War games. Um, like a lot of skirmishers, javelin skirmishers in older games were also pretty competent melee troops. I love those units. And now that the fact that there's going to be archers that are pretty competent melee troops, I'm just I'm just slavering at the thought. Ugh. And continuing on the Lord and Seaguard theme here, the... Um, what are they called? The Bolt Throwers. I am really, really happy to see that they've got the two options for fire modes, which was already confirmed, but it's really nice to see it in-game here. Um, they got, he chose either the multiple shots, which was really good against infantry, or the single strong shots, which was good against things like the Carnosaur, or a certain giant toad sitting on a certain giant dinosaur. Um, yes. <sighs> Trying to think, is there anything else I need to talk about? Anything else we need to cover? The game, oh my god, was just jaw-dropping. It was outstanding. I can't... I really couldn't believe and couldn't see there being a lot of improvements over Total War Warhammer 1. But... I am jaw-dropping. I am... I, I, the words escape me. I'm just saying sentences that don't make sense. Like, I am jaw-dropping. Um, the game looks like they've taken the War, Total War Warhammer and cranked it up to 11. It is beautiful, it is breathtaking, it is... It is perfect! It's... I don't see how they're going to improve it for Total War Warhammer 3. They don't need to improve it, it's just... I'm sure we're going to find flaws in it once it's released, but from what we've seen, I've got nothing to fault at all. Um, the shields, I must admit, I'm still a wee bit... There's just something a wee bit off about them. And something a wee bit... Not too shiny is not the right word, but it's the best thing I can think of to describe it. But anyway, yes. I've rambled on more than enough. Um, Total War Warhammer 2 is shaping up to be... The most epic looking Total War... Leave ever. Ever. Um... Oh, I'm not talking. I'm not even talking now. I'm just making noises. It's just that good. So I'll see you all next time. Bye, see bye. Hello and welcome to this Total War Warhammer 2 Let's Play for the High Elves. This custom battle takes place in the stunning landscape of mosquito swamps in the heart of Lustria, one of the few ritual sites the four races will be fighting over in order to gain control of the vortex. Now it's worth mentioning that everything you see in this battle today is a work in progress, so some visuals and stats are placeholder and are subject to tweaking and balancing. Now moving on to our army we have the Frostheart Phoenix, a highly armoured flying unit that causes a chilling effect to those around it, slowing them down and making them weaker. Beneath we have the Swordmasters of Hoeth, as their name suggests they are extremely skilled infantry that can actually deflect incoming missile fire by slashing it out of the air. A unit some may recognise from the Fallen Gates battle is the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. Interestingly, this is the only piece of artillery available to the High Elves, but it's very flexible, carrying multiple types of ammunition suitable for both infantry and large units. Moving on now to the Spearmen, these are a High Elf player's first line of defence. They're relatively cheap, surprisingly quick to move around, and great against large foes. Now we have heard some of the community's concerns regarding shield patterns and colours, so I wanted to show a snippet of some of the other High Elf factions in the game. Of course, these are all subject to tweaking, so please keep the feedback coming. Now, at the head of our army, we have one of the most skilled warriors in all of Ulthuan, 
the legendary Lord Tyrion and his prized mount Malahandir. At his back we have the Lotharan Seaguard, a very powerful and flexible unit because they have good armour to protect from missiles, spears to defend against cavalry, and bows to attack at range. Here we have the much younger Flamespire Phoenix whose embers still shine bright. The Flamespire is more vulnerable to missile fire but can heal itself when it's damaged and drop fire on enemies below it. Protecting the bird is the Phoenix Guard, a super powerful halberd infantry unit that is absolutely devastating to any large foe they encounter. And lastly onto my favourite high elf unit, the Dragon Princes. These are the highest tier of cavalry available. The entitled princes wear dragon armour protecting them against any fire attacks and just making them look badass obviously. Alright so I think we're just about ready to start the battle. If we turn back on the UI, you can see all of the lovely units at my disposal. We have a fairly diverse army, also carrying a High Elf Mage and a Lore Master of Hoeth, who have some powerful magic at their disposal. Now before we start, I'm just going to turn on Guard Mode for some of my Spearmen here, and make sure Skirmish Mode is off for my Missile units. I also forgot to mention I have two Cavalry units on my right flank. We've got the Illyrian Reaver Archers, who are obviously Missile Cavalry, and the Silver Helms with Shields, which are kind of a more standard melee cavalry. Alright, I think we've waited long enough. Let's begin the battle. There are a few corrections I want to make. My artillery could do with having some protection from the front, so we'll shift our spearmen in front of them and fill the gap with the Phoenix Guard. Today it's Lord Mazda Mundi on his famed Mount Zlack and his horde of lizardmen who want to take back the mosquito swamps for himself. He has some proud looking croxigors at his front, flanked with the blessed pterodons using fire leech bolas. No doubt they'll make this a very tough fight. Now because he's moving pretty slow and has a thick bulk of infantry at his head, I'm going to switch to the multi-shot round for my artillery, as it has much greater anti-infantry capabilities versus the standard round, which is meant for large foes. He's got a little while to go yet before he's in range. Looks like he's pushing up some of his cavalry ahead of the main army though, perhaps scouting the woods out or looking to hide there himself. It's a unit of Horned Ones, an extremely rare and powerful cavalry unit. Let's move up our Dragon Princes to mirror what Lord Mazda Mundi is doing. Look at how cool these guys are, they walk with such arrogance, I love it. Oh, that horn means they're in range. Nice, here we go. Now the anti-infantry shot isn't going to do much against the horned ones, but it might push them out of the forest. Our cavalry is pushing up to meet the threat, though the silver helms would have a tough time against the horned ones. I'm going to shift a spearman unit over to help, and then shift another sword unit in front of the artillery. Now it's worth mentioning also that I'll be cutting between the raw gameplay footage and the replay gameplay footage, so you can get both a zoomed out tactical look at the battle and a close up cinematic look at the units. And I'll try to be quiet so you can soak in the atmosphere during these moments too. So as Mazda Mundi is an insanely powerful magic user, at the first sign of damage, he has cast Apotheosis, regenerating the hit points of his nearby units that are being attacked. A pretty clever move. As long as the individuals don't die, he can just keep healing them. All right, we've got some Pterodons moving on my right, so I'll move out the good old Frosty to push them back. Dragon Princes are about to engage some Cold One Riders now. This should be an easy fight, but they are backed up with some extra Pterodons. Alright, it's time to switch to the standard shot and fire on that Feral Carnosaur that's coming into range. I don't care how much charge defense my Spearmen have, that thing is going to hit like a wrecking ball into my front line. Time to pull Frosty back, can't really see how he's doing out there, and it looks like he's been fired on. And yep, the Horned Ones have engaged my helms on the right, let's push spears on them. Ah, it was the cheeky chameleon skinks lurking in the woods, firing on my Frostheart Phoenix. Sneaky sneaky. Now 
Now that big blue shield over to the left is buffing their leadership in there and protecting them from spells. I think it's the shield of the old ones. Great charge defense, guys. Well done. Uh, let's get Tyrion to help. Oh crap, Mazdamundi's Ruination of Cities hit both of our lines. Let's pull Tyrion out of that. It's an omnidirectional wind spell, so it's pretty hazardous. You never really know which way it's going to go. Well, you're not the only one who can play with wind spells. We've got some wind spells too. Looks like he's using banishments on me, so we're going to have to move our phoenix. Oh, just missed the Croxigors, but it did some good damage even so. Right, let's turn up the heat. There's a big group here, so we're going to throw down the Tempest Vortex to disrupt them. Guard your ears. Oh yeah, now this is actually great at ensnaring flying units, but it does decent damage on the ground too. Looks like he's healing more units. Let's push the cavalry out to the chameleons. Looks like we've got a little bit of a gap we can exploit here. And the Pterodons are crushing my artillery. Let's get our missiles to take down that Carnosaur. It's causing me huge problems. And get our artillery to focus on Mazda Mundi. It's not going to be a good day for that guy. Alright, it's Tag Team Phoenix time. Father and Son, Fire and Ice. That Wake of Fire ability is so powerful if timed correctly, and combined with the debuff from the Frost Heart, the two phoenixes work so well together. Our Dragon Princes have taken quite a bit of damage, but we'll send them back into this chunk of units here, and make another pass with the Flamespire Phoenix. Right, we've finally gotten rid of the Carno. Let's focus on Mazda Monday now and buff our Winds of Magic. Now, at this stage of a battle, things can get a little bit hectic. Now, of course, you can pause it to issue orders, but we don't do that here at Total War. We can use Hand of Glory. It's pretty much made for the Lothran Sea Guard as it buffs reload and melee attacks, so these guys will be ready for anything. Let's buff our Winds of Magic to empower our Phoenixes again. Ugh, that's so annoying. Mazdamundi is called Banishment again, which means I'll have to move my archers, effectively disrupting my buff. I think we've got him now though. Battle is turning in my favor. Yeah, just mopping up the remaining few now, dealing with the stragglers. Psh, look at him run away, the absolute coward. So at this stage we just need to chase down any stragglers, make sure that we keep them routing and don't let them come back. Alright, I think that's it. We've just about won. Mazamundi is going to run back to the swamp he crawled out of and today belongs to the High Elves. So yeah, that's it for the battle and for the video. Let us know what you thought in the comments. Remember to subscribe to be the first to get exclusive Total War videos. And we'll see you very, very soon. Bye.